Fly your fair nation. Fly your fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. Tonight we're recording from Kingdom Studio Broadcasting Network and we are powered by Fly Fair Nation. We're sitting here tonight with the one and only Light Skin Records, Film God, JB and Sutherland. Bop, 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 bop. I don't know if he's actually going to be participating in the whole show. He's just here for a few topics to chip in and chip out. Anyhow, I just want to say one time for Spice reading this man to filth. Oh my God. <laughs> I did not know what to expect. I read the comment before I read. I listened to the actual audio for what she posted, but apparently this man been talking up her name and calling her out and talking bare fuckery about her. And before I even got to that, I wanted to talk about how someone posted something like, oh, she's back to being black. She was never anything, but little makeup had y'all shook. She been performing in white face mm -hmm. <laughs> and all that other fun stuff too, which I thought was hilarious because I mean, great promo to the point people started getting annoyed and it was like, when you coming back to being black, when you take Shouts out off? to my homegirl for doing that makeup too, Noseworthy Creations. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shout out to her. And, oh, wait, someone you know actually did her makeup? Like yeah. the, oh. Mm -hmm. ah. She does her carnival makeup and all that. Ah, yeah. good to know. I did not know that. But yeah, so um, she made a post saying, you know, y'all keep asking me when I'm going back black, but y'all the same one that was cussing me for being too black. So which one do y'all, which was the whole point of her doing it? Because she knew this was going to happen in the song Black Hypocrisy. One of the main things that she kept repeating was, y'all going to ask me to come back black? Am I going to be pretty when I turn white? Like, what's going to happen? And, and it's exactly what happened. Like, exactly what she said in the song is exactly what happened. Y'all cuss her for being too black. Y'all cuss her for being dark and all this stuff. And then she decides, hey, I'm going to quote-unquote bleach. I'm a fake bleach and see if y'all like me better then. And y'all still weren't pleased. You can't please everybody. So, I mean, she's back to living in her true skin color. I'm here for all the chocolate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that's that's what my, I originally wanted to talk about till today when I saw the video. And I was like, oh, Jesus, who trouble her now? Because y'all know she an old tegger egg. Like, mm -hmm. stop <coughs> bothering Spice. Stop bothering her. So, she went on a man's show and she actually tell him for go suck him on Mars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, I, I won't say he, des he deserved it because I don't know exactly everything that he had said about Spice, but I did go on his page and, and I, I did look up his, you know, his, his company, or his show, his podcast, uh -huh. and he is a little extra. Mm -hmm. It's him and another girl, and the girl is a little bit more calm. She's a little mm -hmm. bit more, you know, tamed and professional. Mm -hmm. He's just real raw and extra with it. And I was like, yeah, I can see why Spice went off on him. He's there for the ratings? He, he's there to be extra. Mm. Pretty much. Like, he's dared to be extra. Yeah, well, Spice extra-er. Because right. for those who did not know, Grace Hamilton and Spice, like I said before, is not the same person. Spice will cuss you to filth. And like there's another angle in another video where another girl is talking, where, mm. where he calls the girl, and the girl said, no, yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always I talk bad about Spice. And when you're co-host and your other girl with Leah Farr and take it easy, yeah, we go hard, Panar and things. So... You know, clearly I mean, other people feel the same way. Well, I don't know what he expected by having her on the show because you got exactly what I expected would happen. You sitting there calling down her name, calling down her name, saying all these bad things and slam down my name and throw what part, like all the things but that she Spice was saying. But Spice gave him what he wanted. Though. Yeah, she did. She did. I, that's why I say he's there for ratings because if you have Spice on the show after everything that you said about her, you know she gonna cuss you to filth. You know she is. So, I mean... Shout out to him, I guess. he um, Now his show is popping. I get how many people researched him and looked him up and tried to figure out who he was. So he got something positive out of it because bad publicity is good publicity too. So, And I actually think the formula for the show is actually good. Like some of the content and some of the material is actually good. And, and the presentation is good. The quality of, of the videos and things like that is good as well. So I, I don't know. I didn't look that far into it. You're not going to talk bad about Spice and get my looks, my likes, your my likes views, your no views. nothing. No, I'm ignorant. Like that other guy, like y'all people president. Like I don't search his name I d except for that one time. Like I don't, I don't subscribe to anything. Like he, all that propaganda and fuckery, I don't look these people up because I know that it's, it's for that. Yeah, but at least, at least we know who he was before he became president. Mm -hmm. This guy... I wanted to know why Spice no. was giving him so much energy. Mm. 
You get what I'm saying? Like, why did he? Why she was just on the Breakfast Club, right? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest platforms Mm -hmm. out here. Why give him that energy? Why even grant him the interview, even though it was at a live location or whatever? Why even grant him the interview? You know? No. She's still for the people. (laughs) Yeah, she's still for the people, but now you gave him exactly what he wanted. You know? Now his show is going to be popping. Now all of the Spice haters now have a leader. (laughs) (laughs) Why would you you ever hate Spice? She's a Smurf. Blue hair gang. No? (laughs) <laughs> like whatever anyway spice is still bae I, do, I don't care i love her spice i love you but um <laughs> um on another note christmas is here mm-hmm. in the retail world it's well it's christmas been here before halloween even done christmas was here and i'm saying this because like i've said before i work in retail and I'm seeing Santa Claus and wreaths and Christmas trees and Charlie Brown Christmas and the whole shebang already fully displayed. Like my store, my boss told me that we were having a visit next week and it has to be fully done by next week. We just started November. Thanksgiving is not here. I'm always going to complain about this because it's never going to make sense to me. Can we enjoy the seasons? Like I'm a holiday person. Like some people might be the Grinch and don't celebrate holidays. Cough, cough. But I love holidays. I love Halloween. I love Thanksgiving. I love Christmas, New Year, like that, all that stuff. I love it. Like when I'm like in a good space, like I do the whole decorating, like I'm one of those people. And I like to enjoy, like, I love like pumpkin spice smells and butter pecan and like all that stuff like that you think of when you think of thanksgiving like all the fall smells and stuff like i'm one of those people and i feel like they just jump over thanksgiving like fall just dash away like it's just okay halloween's gone now it's christmas time i understand it's a business the the more they see it the faster they'll buy it whatever the case is but it hurts my heart anyways say this to say this i think it's funny how they typecast neighborhoods and send them things based on the demographic. It makes sense, but I think it's funny. I don't know if I told you this, but someone wants to call corporate on my store because there is no white Santa Claus displayed in the store. Now, I work in a predominantly Caribbean neighborhood. There's very little white people. Very little. Like, when I see white people coming, I'll be like, oh, shit. Where you came from? I feel like they're going to the stadium when, (laughs) when I see them in my store. So. To me, it makes sense that there's no white Santa Claus. Now, there's an Italian, well, there's a pizza shop next door, and there are Italian people in there, there's white people that work there, and one of the ladies that works there, she was upset that we don't have any white Santa Claus for sale, and she said she's going to call corporate on us. Now, my thing is, that's who you should call. You shouldn't call them yelling at us about it, because we don't order these things. We don't have the option to order you know, white Santa Claus over black Santa Claus or whatever the case is. Because before we are even ready for Christmas, Christmas is here for us. Like, we're setting up Halloween and we're putting out the rest of our Halloween stuff. And corporate is sending us Christmas stuff. Like, they're in the back waiting for us. We don't even get a chance to order the stuff. You know what I'm saying? So we can't even have demographic privilege. Yeah. No. (laughs) Like, it's... (laughs) No. They want... They want everything to be white. Like, they, I guess they don't realize that black people want black Santa Claus in their house. And I remember we had a conversation before about, like, whether Santa Claus is is black, <laughs> is black or white. And you said something about, you know, you don't want to teach your children about Santa Claus being white because a white man is buying them gifts and dropping I don't want to teach my kid about Santa Claus, period. But if, if they want to practice, you know, I guess... The imagination the portion imagination of it. The imagination portion <laughs> of it, I guess I don't I don't mind, but I'm not gonna lie to them and say, Hey, Santa Claus brought you this. No, my hard work, <laughs> your mother's hard work brought you this. Okay? <laughs> Period. Appreciate it. Not some white man or some fictional black man brought you this. No, no. But like no. I was saying ab- no when sense. we had the conversation, they have Santa Claus for every race, which I learned That's cool. because I had a Santa Claus gift set at one point, which was literally, there was a Caribbean Santa Claus he had on flip-flops and like a tropical shirt. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they had like, you know, um, Irish Santa Claus and they had Indian Santa Claus <laughs> and like all these other things. And I'm like, of course it appeals to 
people and the children and their fantasy and all that stuff. And I appreciate that. And, you know, of course, Spanish people, there was a Papa Noel or Padre de lo, some shit, whatever. I can't remember how to say it, but Father Christmas, like, that's, <laughs> and, you know, Saint Nick and all that other stuff. But I just personally thought that was funny. And like you said, we can't even have demographic privilege. I don't want to get on my soapbox and talk about how, you know, we can't have anything because that's essentially what it is. Now, my store manager found some white Santa Claus in the back, but they were broken. We can't sell them because they're from last year's decorations. So we're basically using it as just props in the store. But that's an issue for her also because she wants to buy something that's intact and whole. And I'm like, sis, go to the one in Pembroke Pines. Go to the one by the beach. Like, where there's white people. Like, it's one store. Like, I, I know we're not the only store that only has black Santa Claus. You get what I'm saying? Like... People are so privileged and they're so like caught up on, I shouldn't just say people, white people, because like they're so used to having what they want in reach and easily accessible and they never had to like go out of their way for their comfort. And this one little thing is so monumental. She's talking about calling corporate. Now, mind you, this is somebody who we put things away and hide things. But can you blame her? Because yes. no, I can't blame her for exercising what she believes is her right. Black That's people, not a right. It's a fucking store. It's not a necessity. Believes. Black people, we wouldn't do that. We don't call corporate. We just cuss you out and <laughs> keep it moving. Me and Whitney call corporate. Fuck oh, you, me. Okay, well, this customer service bitch. That's you and Whitney. <laughs> Most black people, we not sitting on the phone for three hours trying to find corporate or going on Google. Y'all need and to. to. Y'all get free. Number. Y'all get free or, merchandise when y'all call corporate. <laughs> exactly. Black people, we don't do things like that. You get what I'm saying? We live by the oh no snitching rule. Or we'll handle everything on our own type of thing, right? So. Mm. You can't be mad at her for trying to exercise her privilege. You get what I'm saying? I guess. But good luck getting that because, like I said, it's not something that we can order. It's not anything to do with the store itself. Corporate sees that when y'all send us them white Santa Claus, they sit on the shelf because, funny enough, yeah, now that I think about it, we've had, like, black Santas before, and them things fly off the shelves. Those and the black angels, they fly off the shelves. Off rip. The white Santa Claus, they sit there, yeah. and then they end up buying them when it's 90% off, mm-hmm. if they buy it. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, okay, after a couple of years of this thing happening, let's try and see. We're going to sell them all the little black Santa Claus that's hiding in the back because the other stores ain't selling them and see what mm-hmm. happens. They're going to sell because the demographic, like the people in the neighborhood, that's what they want. They don't want the oppressor sitting in their house <laughs> staring at them, telling them, you know, I bought this. Like, I owned your parents and I bought these gifts for you. Like, they don't, they don't want that. So... That's just that's that's me. Don't laugh at you looking at me like <laughs> Don't laugh at me, okay? But I don't know. Whatever. Let it, you let you get your rounds off. Shut up. But no, um on a more somber note, I'm just flying through these cuz I I didn't plan on being here for too long. I'm trying to make this 30 minutes if that. But I know this is kind of old, but I still want to talk about it because I didn't have a moment to actually talk about any current events um, on any of the last episodes, really. And it's it's really sad. But um, I'm not sure if any of you guys heard about Donye Jones, the 24-year-old young man that was lynched in, where is that, St. Louis? St. Louis, mm-hmm. Missouri. Um, what I want to talk about was did you hear that how the police are trying to rule it as a suicide? Yeah, because they found him on the floor. Yeah, but I know they say that you shouldn't tamper with like crime scenes and stuff like that, but his mother found him hanging from a and, tree. And he's, they said, they said, when the call came in, they ruled it as a suicide as well, or they said it was a suicide. Who ruled it as a suicide? They, the, the, the person the who person called, who it, called in? it and said it was a suicide as well. But continue. I'm okay. just filling in the blanks. Okay. Well, I like to play devil's advocate because sometimes I like to look at things from different aspects, like try to say, okay, maybe it was a suicide. Maybe it was, you know, maybe it wasn't a, a hate crime or whatever. But why... How how did he get in the tree to hang himself? Like, how did he tie the sheet around his neck to do that? Like, and I saw a picture and his pants were like hanging down like at his ankles. 
why were his pants at his ankles? Like, how did his pants get loose? Like, yeah. um, you know, saying that there's so many questions as to how the you knot, would... the knot that was tied. His mom said, "There's no way he could have." Yeah, tied I a saw knot that like also. That. Um, <clears throat> also, his mom was involved with the Mike Brown mm -hmm. march. Yes, she was. She was a very huge part of the activism as far as like after everything happened with Mike Brown and she feels like that's that was retaliation. Like that's why her son was targeted. But she said she was getting threats. She she was getting threats from yeah. before. So, you know, I, I won't I won't rule that out either. I yeah. don't know I don't know much about the guy. Yeah. Um, from pictures, he seems very happy, but pictures yeah, can lie. I, I, I didn't even want to mention that part because that's something everyone always says. Oh, they were a quiet kid. Oh, they were a happy kid. Yeah. There was nothing wrong. You never know. But never know, at but the same time, there's so many reasons why he would have been targeted mm -hmm. to be for it to be a homicide as opposed to a suicide. And that's where I kind of like, I'm just like, I don't. I hate the news because mm -hmm. you never really know what's going on. There's the mother who went on Facebook and she posted up the pictures. And I think the pictures got taken down from like some other platforms and things like that. But she made a post and she said, she said, listen, I want y'all to see what's happening. I mean, y'all, it's, it, it was, it's, it's bad because it wasn't covered at all. Mm -hmm. And there has been other cases like this um, earlier in the year and last year of mm -hmm. other kids getting lynched. You know, and it doesn't get it doesn't get covered. Um, like, is it actually a lynching? Like, this is race related. Yeah. See, I didn't know that. Y'all know I don't listen to the news. I don't watch the news. This popped up on my timeline. That's how I heard about it. And the caption was, "Nobody's posting about this. Nobody's reporting this. This needs to be heard." Yeah, but I I had to research it before. Yeah. I you know because I mean yeah that sounds good like nobody is posting it nobody is this that and the third but you just don't want to post something because you see it on yeah. social media you don't want to be a social media activist. Yep. You get what I'm saying? So you just reposting something because you see it on a a, a black conscious site. No, go research. <laughs> I don't follow it. those. I you stay away from saying? those. I feel like there's so much brainwash happening. <laughs> No, you have to. You have to research what, what you see online. Yeah. And uh, upon researching it, I seen other stuff. And I was like, wow, this is, this yeah. is crazy. I mean, I'm not surprised because we become so desensitized yeah. to all of this stuff that's going on. Yeah, that's why it wasn't even a topic of like, oh, my gosh, he got lynched. It was just the point of me bringing it up was the different aspects, like the different ways you can look at it. Like. Could this be a suicide? Could, does it make more sense for it to be a suicide or for it to be a lynching? Yeah. That's that's my take on it. And, and Each reality, individual would just have to do their own yes, research. Yes, yes. But, I mean, in the event that it is it, he was hung, like, I hope whoever did it is brought to justice, but you know that's probably never going to happen. How are we going to figure out who did it? Because, I mean, St. Louis... <laughs> I, <laughs> Uh, Ferguson still has lint in their water. Listen, you talking about lint? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you still can't get clean water in Ferguson. How many years has it been? That's like my, that's my point. So yeah, justice I know. and uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's even if they know who did it, it's not like how who do you, how do you know who's gonna persecute them? You know what I'm saying? That's it's like I said before. When I drive through certain states and like we go on road trips, I and listen. If I got to pee, I'm holding it. I will get a cup and go piss in the car while I'm driving if I have to. And somebody might say that this is radical and oh, but it's 2018, bruh. 24 year old boy just got found hanging in his backyard, like yeah, yeah. from a tree, like. But we just have to educate each other as a community. And what I mean as a community, yes, we can start from. Black, or if you're Spanish, you start from uh, uh, the household. The, the household, but I don't think we have to be after just limited to race. Your community, your universe, the people that surround you that actually loves you. Y'all just build, man, and educate each other, and start from the kids. The the your your mom and your mom's mom, or your dad and your dad's dad, your grandparents. They not gonna get it right yeah. now. So just chill. Like start from the kids. Yeah, and, and, that's true because yeah. it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Like, yeah. as ignorant as that may sound, some are more receptive, but you you can try, but it's not something that I would necessarily harp out on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to try and beat a dead horse. Like, if someone is telling you, this is how I feel and that's what it is, then hey. Like, I, 
I had a, I kind of got into it with an employee the other day because they were being loud and ignorant about something. And I was like, you look dumb. Like, she's looking at her time card, and the way her time card is, what? It makes sense though. You go to work at eight o'clock. You, you punch know your out. Your coworkers probably listen to your show. I don't give show. a fuck. Go suck your mama. Way I listen to my fa. Anyways, <laughs> so well, actually, no. The security guard at my job listens to my show there now. You go. See, I <laughs> he, see. Well, all he's right. a dickhead. I told him to go listen. I subscribed on his phone and everything. I don't care. What up? Shit. Mm-hmm. But that's your business. If you want to listen to my show when I'm off the clock, that's your motherfucking problem. First Amendment right is free speech, bitch. Anyways, <laughs> so <laughs> she like was like going off at the time clock and you know as, as a manager I was like you know what what is wrong I, I was concerned I was like what is wrong you seem you know discomforted she's like oh no nah, I ain't finna sign this next week we ain't cause they sign their time cards to confirm that their hours are correct she's like I ain't finna sign this this ain't right this ain't right and I was like what happened she's like it says I only work four hours on Monday and I was like yeah from four to twelve thirty then from one to four thirty that makes the rest of your hours nah 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 that don't look right um, you clocked out for lunch? Yeah, but that, that, but I clocked back in. Yeah, it's right there. I was like, it says Monday, Monday. There's two parts that says Monday and the date. It says the same date. So Monday, you worked this amount of hours before you went to lunch. And then when you came back from lunch, you worked this amount of hours. And the total is there. Nah, this looks funny. <laughs> this looks funny. I was like, fucking dumb bitch. I just walked away. I was like, okay, I just clocked. I was like, okay, well, excuse me. And I just clocked in and went back upstairs because I was like, I'm... My daddy told me, if you argue with an idiot, that makes you an idiot, yes, too. So does. I just walked away. I was like, sis, I'm not finna sit here and try to convince you. I don't know what happened. I didn't do time cards this week, so I don't know if they had to sit there and explain it to her. <laughs> because at the end of the time, even if it's the end of the week or whatever, the last time you punch out, it tells you the total hours. So I'm like, can you not do math? Like, what do you... Okay, sis, like... <laughs> You mad for nothing. But <laughs> another supervisor had walked up and she saw it. She was like, is everything okay? I said, I'm fine. I'm you can she was like, uh-uh, no. But this is someone that I've never actually worked with directly because we're moving everybody around. So I this is my first actual interaction with her. And I was just like, bitch, you ignorant? I was mm-hmm. like, oh how and it's an older woman too, like an old coon. Like it's an older woman. I was just like I started to my cougars out there. Ooh, Okay, I didn't say cougar. I said coon. Coon, okay. Sorry. All right. <laughs> uh-uh. I wasn't giving her the cougar title. Lord God, no, sir. But, yeah, she she was a mess. As far as cougars go, though, since you want to uh think about cougars, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about bad sexual experiences, right? I wanted to have a sit down with a bunch of girls and talk about bad sexual experiences. Guys, too, if y'all want to. Uh, whatever. But I felt like... Some of y'all gonna get in y'all feelings because I know that other people listen to the show <laughs> and friends of friends. Like I know Shadow told me that people be listening to her show and be going. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, maybe we shouldn't go and talk about the experience itself. I want to talk about like the mentality behind the experience, like the feelings that come from the experience. Because a lot of women don't know how to say no and be definite in saying no. I know we talk about like me too and no to what? To sex. Or any kind of like affection or whatever. Anything that makes us like really uncomfortable, especially if the person, I'm not going to just say woman, men too, just anybody who is being pursued, someone that's being pursued. They don't know how to say no and be definite sometimes because there's always the, oh, well, they're a nice person. They didn't do anything wrong to me. They're not, you know, being forceful. Pity fuck? Well, I'm not even getting to the fuck portion of it. But they're afraid to be, like, direct and say no. They'll be like, oh, no, it's no thank you. And like, they try to be polite and, like, you know, like, try to make it seem like it's not a big deal that they're saying no. And then they end up in a situation where it ends up being either pity fuck or... Not forced, but you didn't necessarily say no in a way that the person understood that you meant no, and it ended up happening. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, but it's it's the flip the flip side to that coin is a lot of women feel like they're in a situation. Okay, what if this? What if I tell this guy no and he flips out and try to beat me up? Well, there's that aspect too, but I'm not talking about that portion. I'm talking about the part where. We are sometimes playful, and a lot of people don't understand that just because 
you're saying no to sex does not mean a person doesn't like yeah, you. Yeah, but a lot of times when I'm uncomfortable, I laugh. That doesn't mean that, that I am comfortable. That That's too. what I'm saying. But so a lot of calm women... Calm down. You're getting hype. You're getting hype. Calm in, down. In, in, situations, in, in a lot of situations like that, though, where... Yes, because I'm one of those people. Like, you know, me and Kat were talking about that the other day, how when we got pulled over, we were sitting there cracking jokes and talking shit. Like, I'm one of those people. When I'm in a situation where I'm uncomfortable or I laugh at all the wrong times, like all the wrong times. And sometimes I have to catch myself because I know I shouldn't be laughing. I'd be like, nigga, this is not funny. And I be, I be giggling my ass off. But like I was saying, like, let's say... Me and somebody dealer, right? We like each other. We hanging out. We went to go see a movie. Netflix and chill. Whatever the case is, right? We start kissing and touching and whatever. And I don't want to have sex, right? Or they don't want to have sex. But whoever is like, no. And, you know, they like shy away. And it's not like, it's not a definite though. Like, of course, no means no means no means no. But the body language doesn't coincide with the verbal. You know what I'm saying? I understand and that. Yeah. a lot of people don't understand that wanting to do something and feeling comfortable doing something are two different things. Like, for the longest while, for like six plus years, I've been wanting to dye a bright pink patch in my hair or some bright color patch. I want to. I really genuinely want to. Or I wanted blonde tips at one type. But anyways, like, I've not done it because that's not something I'm comfortable doing. You might be like, oh, my God, that's so simple. It's hair dye. But, no, that's something I'm not comfortable. But I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? And that's, Yeah, but you're saying the body language doesn't match. So she's saying no, but the body but language doesn't. But she's still touching you, and she's still cuddled up with you. She's still making so, okay, out with so you. Okay, what, so what I'm not understanding is what what is your what is your problem, or what are you trying to get to as far as that goes? Because... Some people read that as meaning that they want to have sex. That means sex that they're playing hard to get. You know what I'm saying? And but then why a lot wouldn't of ta- you read that? Slow down. Yeah, because they're saying no. Yeah, but she's on me. So it's like you're saying so no, but you're giving you. me head. No, Well, no, I did not say they're giving you head now. So that's what but, I'm saying. Let's break this still, down. Hold on. Even still, if she decides to give you head, she doesn't want to give you her vagina. That's okay, that's understandable. So that's what I'm saying. So what are you saying no to? So why in, the, in the beginning stages. Or whatever they're saying no to. It could be they don't want you to touch them. Maybe they just want to give you head. So maybe the conversation as a whole needs to be clear, not just yeah. one individual. Yeah, so, but, okay, so it's, okay, yes, I don't want to have sex, stop, but stop, I'm willing stop, to give stop, you stop, head. Stop, 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 okay. stop. Okay, because I said that. I said sometimes it's also on the part of the person that isn't being direct and saying, you know, it's not the person that's taking the message incorrectly. The person that's delivering the message also is not delivering it properly. So maybe they do need to have a conversation and say, hey, I just want to suck your dick. I don't want you to fuck me. Okay, but a lot of people aren't having those conversations, and that's part of the problem. However, if they're not comfortable having a conversation, they should at least be comfortable saying no and actually sticking to no if that no ends up being a conversation then by all means but a lot of women i'm speaking for women because i am a woman they feel uncomfortable because like i said before the person didn't do anything wrong you know what i'm saying the person isn't being forceful they're not mean they're not you know what i'm saying like there's all the reasons why they should give them the sex you know what i'm saying quote unquote they're quote unquote and they feel bad if they say no. Because we do a lot of, like, I don't want to call it pity fuck, but we do a lot of, like, compensating for people's feelings, and we put other feeling, people's feelings before ours. Because you end up in a situation where you don't necessarily want to have sex with this person, but to avoid any kind of negative, like, not even violent, any kind of negative energy because you that's really... That's what I'm saying. I said not even violent. Yeah, but any that's ki- a part of it. Okay, but I'm saying any kind of negative situation, like let's say I really, really like this guy. I really like this guy or I really like this girl and I just want to take it slow. But they don't believe it because me personally, I love kissing. I love making up like tongue all down your throat. I am touching. I am grabbing. I am groping. All of that stuff. And I can be fine with that. Not everyone can be fine with that. Someone might read that as, oh, she wants a dick. We're going to give her this shit tonight. No. No, no, no. We're just going to make out. And then there comes the, oh, you teasing. Oh, you playing hard to get. Oh, you're doing, like, you playing games. I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah, but you're still focused on, like, the violent aspect of it. No, I'm not. I'm saying that a lot of women 
they compromise or not compromise they they settle for a certain certain situation because they don't want a negative outcome mm-hmm. period like i really like this guy i want to continue vibing with him right now if i tell him no now conversation stops it's like a lot of guys don't know how to continue a conversation with without sex right <laughs> to 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 be real with you Right, they they wasn't taught how to communicate like that. Mm. So then, once you you cut that off, they don't know where to go from there. So that's what I'm saying. Like she she doesn't know like she, well she knows what she wants, but she doesn't want a negative outcome from this situation. Yeah, and and it's levels to it. Yeah, it's levels. So that's I'm not just focusing on the violence part, but negative aspect of the vibe might change dude ain't texting you no more this that and the third but if he ain't texting you no more he wasn't for you in the first place exactly. and vice versa guys it's the same thing you know what i mean if a girl because our situation is more on damn if i don't buy this for her if i don't give this to her she's not gonna text me no more she's not gonna hit me up no more i can't get the box this, no more all girls are gold diggers that's what you're trying to say no but <laughs> That's in a lot of guys' mind friends. Guys that's mm-hmm. not secure with themselves. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about dudes that's walking around with the, the big dick energy, oh, as they God. call it now. We're not talking about that. You mean self-confidence? You know what I mean? But <laughs> that's what they call it now, 2018, the big dick energy or whatever. But we're not talking about them dudes. You know? But it's, it's, it's flip-flop. You that's know, it's funny flip-flop. you say that. I just thought about like a relationship I had with someone. Because like, you know I'm a very independent person. Right, mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm, I'm a self starter. Like I'm okay with doing things by myself. Hey, pointless talks. But, <laughs> um, I had someone like I was in a relationship with someone, and they used to all like every time we had an argument, they used to always throw up. Oh, you don't need me in the conversation. Like every argument, we could be arguing about me not wanting to wear heels that night. Like honestly, and he'd be like, "Oh, my opinion don't matter because you don't need me at the end of the day." And I said, like, "What the fuck are you mm-hmm. talking about?" And he, you pay all your bills by your. And I was just like, "Wait, what? Huh?" And I was just like, "Oh, okay." Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think that goes back to like men feeling that they they need to be like the provider in their relationships. Okay. So yeah, no, you just I just had a moment. You you made something connect for me. That's why I just said that because I was like, "Oh shit, maybe that's what it was." <laughs> I'm telling you. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> what is sad? Elaborate. That's sad. What is sad? No, like the like you said, like the big dick energy or the lack thereof. Like mm-hmm. you feel away because I'm good. Like Yeah. Whatever. I mean, okay. Either way, all of that to say. It's just communication to me. I think that's that's what is missing mm-hmm. in the world. And, and um, a lot of relationships. I, I, it ties into, what I'm about to say ties into what you're talking about right now, but uh, if you want to tune into Partially Ignorant, you know what I'm saying, holla at us. But, but uh, on the next episode, I wanted to talk about this, the fact that we don't communicate enough and we jump into relationships mm. so fast on based on these social sites right these mm-hmm. social media sites the instagrams the mm-hmm. facebook it make it so easy for you to feel like you know this person but <laughs> it's a prelude y'all talked about this on another episode but it's not out yet but i'm partially ignorant when shorty was saying that she takes however many months before she goes out on a date with a guy because she's talking to them consistently and she's right. like if this nigga if i curve this nigga this many times maybe he'll be worth it if he sticks around for that and i was sitting here showing her like love because i was like yo dead ass because I be paying niggas dust. I be paying people dust. Like, listen, for me to actually get dressed and leave my house to go see you, like, bruh, I walk around my house naked. Like, I do not like clothes. I am not putting on... For what? First of all, I'm not trying to fuck you. First and foremost. Now, unless I'm trying to fuck you, that's another story. But for the most part, I'm not trying to fuck you. So I got to put on clothes. I got to put... I got to put on a bra. Y'all with the big titties, y'all know what that struggle is like. Putting on a bra is mm-hmm. not fun, okay? I got to go through all this to go out the house and come see you for what? Like, j- to get to, nah, we finna text. I might FaceTime you. We might talk on the phone. If the energy is that bomb, like, we can sit on the phone for a while. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, I, but then most of the times, we just going to keep it funky. Like, most of the times when you're sitting on the phone and you just meet this person too, we go off of the sexual Energy, Mm-mm. right? So we're talking about the sex and nope. how you look and this. Mm-mm. We need to be talking about what is your future? What, what do you want for your future? 
What do you see yourself five, ten years from now? I'm what is somewhere your goals? in the middle. You know what I mean? Things like that. Like, figure out what this person is about before y'all start talking about the sex. Especially if you know that you, you're bomb. I know <laughs> that I'm good as fuck at, at sex. Period. I though. got that part I down. got that part. <laughs> you know, and the only reason, ladies, I'm sorry, I don't want to sound arrogant. The only reason why I say that is, is because I tried to figure out what the lady like. Oh, my God. Instead of what I like. But anyways. Um, <laughs> you be out here selling dick on all these podcasts. Oh I'm my not, goodness! I'm not, I'm like I'm saying. a pleaser. I know what women like. No, I'm no, like, I don't I'm, know what women I, like. I, I try to find out, and I work with That's her. And it's for her. Boy. We don't. We don't know what women like, and until men like figure that out, <laughs> until men figure that out, then you know we don't know what women like. So let's try to figure it out. You know. Anyways, so, like um, I was yeah, saying, I'm point. somewhere in the middle as far as that goes because. I'm not try- like if you're trying to talk to me about sex, I am most likely not entertaining it. Like as horny as I could be, I am not trying to entertain a conversation about sex. I'm not trying to fuck you. Even if I am trying to fuck you, I'm not trying to fuck you mm-hmm. because and a lot of people are like oh body count no my energy like energy goes into sex for me. Like me personally, there's energy exchange. Right, right, like right. I'm not no. And I'm not going as steep as talking about all that shit you be talking about, but I be trying to get to know the person as an individual. Like, before I get to, like, your life goals, I be wanting to know, like, you know your mama? You know your daddy? But that's deep. How y'all doing? How y'all family? But that's the stuff that I talk about. I'm not going as far as, like, the business aspect of it. But that's still deep. Your relationship with your parents and your relationship with your family mm-hmm. is, is very important. If you have kids, your relationship with your kids, mm-hmm. the relationship Ooh. with the mothers of the of the kids... Um, all of that stuff is very important. Twin always say, I like baby daddies. <laughs> no, seriously. She's like, all you like is baby daddies. You love you some baby daddies. And I'm like, just like Shorty said, I like men that are like my father. My father right. is a deadbeat. Well, not a deadbeat. He's a horrible, horrible, horrible partner. But he's a great dad. Like, I feel Your dad bad. is not a deadbeat. A deadbeat no, is no, no, a guy that don't No, no, no. That's why I said he's not care. a deadbeat. I, yeah. I retract it. He's a I made Jamaican it. man. Yeah, he's a whore. He's, a, he's an old whore. He's, he's a, a whore in all man. Like, he's, he's disgusting. He's a Jamaican man. Like, as old as I am with my little young siblings, like, he's disgusting. But guess yeah. what? He takes care of all of his children. To this day, if I need something, I can call my father. As right. big as I am. You know what I'm saying? So, maybe I... And, all the guys that I've ever been involved with that have kids, like either they have custody of their child or they're a very active part of their child's life. Like very active. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And (laughs) I just always thought it was funny because Kat used to always be like, you, do you like have an ad out for baby daddies or like what happened? And I'm like, no, I just, (laughs) I just, maybe they come out for me because they see that I'm nurturing. I don't know. Maybe my boobs are big. You know, they think that maybe the baby wants to rest their head on my tits or something. I'm coddling. I don't, I don't fucking know. It's a coincidence, but maybe like I you have said, a, a nurturing nature. So they say. I guess I'd be trying to deny it, but whatever. Um, that's why I end up with all these fake kids. But it's true though. Like that's your age. Yeah, yeah. or like similar in age. He's <laughs> like five years younger than me. But no, like like I was saying, like I talk to people about things like that. Like I'm talking to you about like what do you like when I say what do you want out of life. My, Whenever I ask people that question, the answer I always want is to be happy. Like, I swear to you. Like, whenever I ask people that question, they'd be like, oh, I want that. Like, But maybe okay. that makes them happy. Well, no. Because they're thinking about stature and things that they're looking for approval, not necessarily happiness. You get what I'm Got saying? You. And I care what people think to an extent. Because... Once it goes past the bounds of where I am comfortable, I'm, fuck how you feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, granted, I've made sacrifices before mm-hmm. that I've had my issues with or whatever, that I've done things or I've put myself in positions where I didn't necessarily want to do something, but because someone else or other people said, this is better for you, this is better for your future, I did it and then end up regretting it on the back end or whatever. Like, same thing with, like, my photography or whatever. Like, my mother, you need to get a job that pays taxes. You need to get a job that pays taxes. Nigga, I could have been banking off photography if I stuck with that shit. And I know that now, but I was young and I was in her house and I didn't have a job that paid taxes. And it was either go to school or work. And by work, she means pay Uncle Sam. So it's like, I can't move out on what I have, so I got to get a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that kind of thing. So even, like, things like that, like... 
could have found a way in real life. Right, in in right. real life, I could have found a way, but I'm spoiled. I'm very privileged that I'm spoiled, and I'm not the type of person to bounce from place to place or whatever. So I just took it on the chin, and I was like, fuck it. And even still, I was still doing photography on the side. I still found ways to find photography jobs that would pay, even if it was, like, trash pay or whatever, just to fulfill that side. That like desire. my Exactly. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's shit like that. But... For those that are like literally just doing what people say, just there's no rhyme or reason to it except someone else said this is what you should do. Like, right. y'all gonna regret some of these things in the future. And if you can avoid making permanent decisions based on temporary feelings, y'all really should. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I was gonna come on here and do a whole sermon about people living for other people and, you know what I'm saying, letting selfish people allow you to be selfless. And I was about to go in. Like, I was, listen, y'all. But then I came and you know, no, gave it some wasn't dope you. Ass content. No, I have my content already written down. Content, content. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that. Someone sent me something, and I believe in signs. Like not even just zodiac signs. Like I believe in signs. I believe in deja vu. You're I about to in... read somebody. I feel build up. No. <laughs> no, I'm trying not to read somebody. That's that's the thing. The... The nigga in me wants to read somebody. Like the the person that I am, the best friend type of person that I am. I be wanting to read people so they can look in the mirror and be like, damn, dog, you fucking up. Because it's for the betterment of you. You get what I'm saying? Like, ooh, child, a word wants to come, but I'm, I'm behave myself. Don't live for other people because other people aren't living but for that's you. That's what social media is all about. I'm not talking about social media. I'm talking about real fucking life. But that's no, that's no, 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 no. I'm talking about living for people who don't give a fuck about you. That's supposed to give a fuck about you. I'm not right. talking about social media. I'm talking okay. about people in your direct in your circle, family. in your family, in your church, in your household, in your neighborhood, at your job that want you to do something that will not make you happy. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about social media flaws and acting like you got money. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about making life decisions based on what other people think you should do. Things that, at the end of the day, based on your belief, is mm -hmm. not something that you agree with. Like, you're about to go tell a lie for what? Like, you're about to stand up in front... Ooh, child. Anyways. Is, so, that, is that based on situation? Is that based on their situation? You no, know? because you can be single. <clears throat> Anyways. Mm. So... Somebody sent me something, and I was like, who, child? So it was a relationship type of thing. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Continue. Yes, it is. It is a relationship type of thing, right? So this was sent to me, and I, like I said, I believe in signs because I didn't even express that I wanted to come through with this word, and this just popped up out of nowhere. And I was and just sermon. like, it was a sermon. I had the soapbox. I had my bottles of water. I had a guitarist in the background. I had everything ready. And I was like, bitch, we finna tie up this here. We finna have our fists out. We finna wave this rainbow flag and be like, we are here, we are out, and we are proud. Okay? But this sermon got put on hold because this message came to me. And I was like, maybe I need to let people live in their lives. Maybe their truth will come from it. Who knows? It's not my place. It's not my business because I'm just as bad as a nigga telling you to do something that don't make you happy. Who knows? Maybe making them happy makes you happy, even if whatever you're doing is going to make you unhappy. Whatever. So what it says is, <laughs> don't laugh at me. Some souls will be choosing to stay in the old energies of struggle and suffering because those are the lessons that their higher self is calling in. Don't assume they need to be saved. Respect the law of free will. So I'm respecting the law of free will. Exactly. If you choose to stay in your struggle and suffering, or not even that you choose, maybe your higher calling is to go through this suffering. Maybe it is destined for you to go through this negative energy and this negative space and all the horrible things that will come from this situation. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe you shouldn't avoid this. You don't you know think people, not, not everyone, because I mean, some people is, you know. Some people is, is subjected to this, but you don't think some people know exactly what they're getting themselves into when they just do it anyway? Yeah. Yeah. But also, like I said, with the same saying no thing, they don't know how to say no because they don't want to have other people be disappointed. Yep. So, I mean, like yeah, I said. That's the point. Like I said, I mean, I hope something good comes from this. I hope you find true happiness at the end of this. I hope there's no regrets. I hope you are secure and satisfied and there's some kind of happiness in this decision. I hope 
you are good. <laughs> some people, listen, some people relation, being in a relationship makes you happy. You get what I'm saying? Like, if they're single, they can't, because they, you can't make yourself happy. That's how they feel. But you have to some, make yourself happy in order to be able to be in a happy relationship. You got to love yourself exactly. first. Exactly. But they don't understand that, right? You don't understand that aspect of it. So they're going through the cycle of relationship after relationship, especially people that get married young, mm. right? How young? You talking like 25? <laughs> Uh, well, 25 is, is good. The 25 is kind of a good... 25 if to you get, get married? Listen, if you got your stuff together, if you got a house, you got a, you, you got a business, a head on your shoulder, stuff that you aiming towards... You went through your whole phase. And y'all got a union, and y'all <laughs> went through your whole phase, cool. You know? And the, or if y'all, y'all could go through your whole face together, depending on y'all situation, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, you can. Depending on your situation. Fuck a gal, walk a gal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> depending on your situation. And, and I mean, in that process, everything is not going to be peaches and cream. He might cheat, she might cheat. It's on y'all if y'all want to get back together. Both or, girls might cheat, both boys or, might right, cheat. Right, right, sorry. I, <laughs> Remember you know, where you on, are. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, individuals might cheat. <laughs> and y'all depend. It's the, it's on y'all if y'all want to get back together or not. But what I'm or saying have is, have an open relationship. <clears throat> yeah. Fuck people together. Yes, that's what you I'm. Saying. I wasn't trying to be that vulgar. But well, I'm ahead. saying like open relationship. You go have sex with whoever you have sex with. You go have sex with whoever. You, as long as y'all respect the fact that we're in a relationship and we come back. But and the we only way that this. can work, it goes back to to. And I know you're probably about to wrap up, but to go back to the beginning of this podcast, communication. Yes. Talk the things. Say what you want. Say what you I want. I am into open relationships. I I'm, am into... Hey, I realize that I really like asphyxiation. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Express that to people. Tell them what you're into. For me, I, I tell girls, like, yo, you know what? I'm, I'm into threesomes. That's something that I'm into, right? Say what you like. Say what you want. You yeah. Know? Period. Period. But, I mean... Yeah, communicate, say that shit, talk the things, pointless talks, all of it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Anyhow, I'm still collecting poetry. You know, if do you know anybody? You who know, is? I actually think that is really cool that you um like read the poetry on air and and things like that, uh, and you interact. With your um, audience. You know, may I try a little something, know. something? You know, that's not the pointless, man. Listen, the three episodes a week, that's the record right now. Oh, my goodness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shouts out to you, man. Those are backed up, man. Yeah, Don't expect yeah. it. I'm late with this one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But anyways, like I said, if you have any poems or short stories you guys want me to read on the show, send it over. Um, pointless Talks. You can send it any of my DMs. It don't matter. Or you can just email it. That's the more professional way to do it because I might not catch the DM as it come in. But askpointless at gmail.com. It's A-S-K-P-O-I-N-T-L-E-S-S-S. Also, don't forget to listen, like, share, follow, subscribe, Pointless Talks podcast. We are on so many platforms. (laughs) (laughs) We're on TuneIn. We're on iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. Follow us on Facebook. I'm upload. I'm still slow with the up uploads on um YouTube, but they come in one by one. Google Play Music. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow my personal page if you want. It's public. All I do is talk shit. Um, I'm on Instagram, Spotify. All of it is pointless talks. P o i n t l e s s s talks. And as of what was it yesterday, the day before, we are now on iHeartRadio. So you can find me on iHeartRadio in the podcast section. Make sure you follow. Like, share with a friend, listen, all that good stuff. And, you know, if you like us, leave feedback on any of the platforms that allows feedback. Keep on the bad mind feelings, them two in a self. And just like every other week, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in. I'm Dale Mondo.